This is Bill Kovacs for Philadelphia Baseball History, and over the next few weeks, we're going to do an in-depth look at the greatest Philly who ever played the game, and that is Mike Schmidt. This week, we're going to look at what I consider to be the top five home runs in Mike Schmidt's career. And then next week, we're going to take a look at the anniversary of what was one of the wildest games ever played, and that's the May 17th, 1979 game between the Phillies and the Cubs that took place at Wrigley Field. Mike Schmidt, of course, hit a very key, in fact, two key home runs in that game. The next week, we're going to finish up looking at Mike Schmidt's home runs by looking at a number of home runs that were significant, but that I didn't quite think hit the top five. And then we're going to follow it all up by looking at Mike Schmidt's relationship with the Philadelphia sports fans. Now this week I tried a different format. It's a it's essentially a Zoom call between myself and two of my best friends from high school. All three of us were huge Phillies fans and all three of us continue to be huge fans of, of baseball and uh, know a little something about baseball history. So you're going to see our discussion of uh, the list of what I put together for the top five home runs of Mike Schmidt's career. And we'll get to that in just a second. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball, and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. How do you show your home team pride? With mugs, t-shirts, masks, phone cases, tote bags, and so much more. Check out tpublic.com and search for Philadelphia Baseball History. This is Bill Kovach for Philadelphia Baseball History. I'm joined by two of my high school friends who were uh, my my brothers in arms whenever we went to ball games. These were uh, the my two friends who I called to uh, most often to say, "Hey, want to go to a ball game?" And most often got the "Yeah, let's go." Uh, and it's Gary Hahn and Paul Parker. All right. So today's topic, we're going to do top five home runs. By Mike Schmidt. I put together what I thought were the top five list. We'll start with what I listed as number five, and that was the All Star Game of 1981, August 9th, 1981, and just setting the stage. You know, we we had the strike in 1981, and uh, the, the uh, baseball wanted to get fans back on board. Two months without baseball, first thing they did was the All Star Game, and uh, the All Star Game was held in Cleveland. Uh, the National League was in the middle, uh, actually it was towards, close to the end of what was what, a, a, an 11 run or 11 uh, game in a, games in a row. So this was the 10th one in a row. And it was a, it was a close game. It was a back and forth game. Mm -hmm. Top of the eighth, Raleigh Fingers is on the mound, counting 0 and 1. And Schmidt hits long fly ball to deep center. So we're not just talking you know, uh, a ball that just barely makes it. It's one that was in deep center. Two-run home run gives the National League the lead 5-4, uh, to four, and that winds up being the final score. So Schmidt hits the game-winning, the All-Star game-winning home run in 1981. And I thought, found that significant because there are so few times in uh, All-Star all history that uh, a Philly has, won, has uh, been... Uh, the one to hit the winning hit. Uh, and Paul, we, we talked about this before, and uh, I remember you, you mentioned uh, how impressive Mike Schmidt's uh, season was in general in 1981. Yeah, you know, I think that the reason at this home run, I, I didn't necessarily agree with you, you know, that it was one of the top five, but the more I thought about it, this was really the, um, you know, he had, a, he had a monster three years there in 79, 80, and 81. I think 79, he had 45 home runs, I think. And obviously at 48 in the in, in 80, and then when the strike shortened seasons of 81, he had 31. Uh, so I just think it was perfect. You know, it was a perfect uh, way to to you know the best player at the time. And as, you know, especially he was what he was the player of the 80s, as you know. I mean, he was he was voted as a player of the 80s, but just that three-year period where he was just he was on top of the game. I mean, nobody could touch him. And I think that 
you know, punctuating that with an all-star home run in 81 after the strike, after the fans needed to be brought back into, you know, like, like you had mentioned, you know, they need to bring them back and bring them back fast. And then for Schmidt to, to hit the home run under their circumstances at that point, the pinnacle of his career, I think it's, uh, I, I must agree with you. I think you're in the top five. 48 was his higher order mark, right? That was the most. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was pretty impressive. I actually went back and rewatched this today um, just to kind of see it. And uh, it was interesting to see Rally Fingers get really upset. Schmidt really trots around the bases. He's really pumped. Um, and I, I found another video as I was going through where it said basically Mike Schmidt was horrible in this all-star game. And it shows him basically booting two balls. So I got to imagine for a go up third baseman, you know, to, to have done that in the all-star game. And the announcers are really all over him about the fact of, well, you know, he plays on AstroTurf and, you know, artificial turf is a different bounce and he's not getting it. And, you know, this is on natural grass. It's very different over here. And, Remember, the National League is used to playing on more artificial surfaces, and a little bit of erratic hops may give them a little bit of trouble. That's a hit all the way, though. So I, I think that had an extra pump. Obviously, the go-ahead run there at that time was extra pump. It was really cool to see, again, all the other National Leaguers, you know, really high-fiving it with them. But, yeah, I mean, so it, it was definitely a, a definitely a great hit, a great home run, and a clutch hit. He was clutch you know, for the Phillies. And he did make that home run more times than not. When it was needed and in the right uh, the right opportunities. I mean, all the home runs that I have on this list are clutch home runs. And this is just five of them. So, moving on. Number four, I have April 17th, 1976. This is one of those crazy games where the Phillies played the Cubs at Wrigley Field and the wind was blowing out. And the Phillies start off in a huge hole. Cubs take a 12 to one lead, then they make it a 13 to two lead. And then top of the fifth, Schmidt comes up the bat, home run. Top of the seventh, Schmidt comes up the bat, home run. Top of the eighth, Schmidt comes up the bat, home run. They wind up tying the game going into the 10th inning and Schmidt hits Dick Allen walk before him. So one man on base, no one out and Schmidt hits his fourth home run of the day. And it's the game winner. The thing I would say about this one as well is that uh, the last one barely cleared the fence, barely cleared, cleared kind of that basket out there. Um, you know, definitely the, the third one, the wind helped it a bit because it was out to uh, right center. Um, it's a Wrigley Field, Field type of game. Uh, the first one was crushed. I mean, you know, just really well out. Uh, second one was a good home run. Uh, but that fourth one just made it. So not only was it clutch, a little bit of luck that helped him in there too. And at the right time, again, it's the guy you wanted up. Now, interestingly, he was the 10th player to have a four home run game. He was the seventh player in the National League. And he was the third Philly. And I think I mentioned this briefly before. Ed Delahanty did it in 1896. Chuck Klein for the Phillies did it in 1936. And Mike Schmidt did it in 1976. And each one of those periods is 40 years apart. That I think I is my- like, like Abraham Lincoln, JFK vibes here. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> and the guy who batted after him both times was Liz- Lizinski, all three times. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know. I do believe that Schmidt is the only person that's hit four home runs in a row twice. And he didn't do it in the same game. But I, I remember as a as a teenager reading that he had, you know, obviously he did four home runs in a row there in Wrigley. Yes. But then there was one game that he did three and then started the next game with one. So four home runs in a row. And I think he's the only player to hit four home runs in a row. In, in four consecutive at bats on two occasions in his career. Editorial note Paul was mostly correct. Mike Schmidt did hit four home runs in a row twice in his career. The second time was over the course of two games from July 6th to July 7th, 1979, hitting one home run in his last at bat on July 6th and then three home runs in his next three at bats on July 7th. But he was not the only player to hit four home runs in a row twice. The other player was Ralph Kiner. But unlike Ralph Kiner, Ralph Kiner 
did it both times over the course of two games. Mike Schmidt is the only one to hit four home runs in a row in one game and then four home runs in a row over the course of two games. All right. Number three. I have listed as number three. April 18th, 1987. Setting this up, we're in Pittsburgh. Schmidt is on home run number 499. We're in the top of the ninth inning. This is another one of those back and forth games. Bedrosian had just given up three runs and given up the lead. Uh, two men on base. Schmidt comes up. We're going to let Harry Callis talk about it. The 3 0 pitch. Swag and long drive. There it is. Number 500. So, Gary. When we were preparing for this discussion, I told you why I listed this number three. And, that, that's the video. and I thought number three, because it's, yes, it was a clutch hit, and which is, a, a, you know, a, a theme in Schmidt's career is that he came through many times to win the game for the Phillies. Uh, yes, it was a significant home run in his career, but as far as the Phillies team, I thought the two home runs that I listed before it were significant for the team in general because both of those were involved in a pennant race. Whereas this one, 1987, the Phils weren't really in a pennant race. Significant home run, but I didn't find it as significant as the other two. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, so I, I still think this one, I mean, as far as meaningfulness, I mean, it's his 500th home run. And it's a 500, you know, other, like the 400th home run, I was there for Pujols' 600th home run in, in California and saw that. They were not take-the-lead home runs that became the game-winning RBI. You know, they were not the thing that put the team ahead. Um, so, and, and just the, uh, the the long, arduous struggle to get to 500, which is a huge milestone. I mean, at the time, what, he was 13th, I think, to make it? Um so I mean, it's, up. yeah, he was he was high up there. It's interesting how many players have come along who have passed him since, but at the time he was pretty high up there. Oh yeah, I, think, I agree with Garrett because that that's why I think it's, it ranks a little higher is because I think we you know we're thirty years thirty years out right thirty five years thirty four years away you know out of that and the, the game has changed so much where it's like five hundred uh, it's not really a big deal eh, you know all these people other people have made it. You know, at the time, this was huge. This was huge. And so I think that uh, for him, you know, as an individual milestone, it's the number one hands down uh, milestone for him, I would think. I would agree. It's just the the gravity of it. I mean, this was this was a long time in coming. It was a build up. And, and I think the fact that it not only was his 500th home run, it was his 500th home run to win the game. You know, it, was, it had that little extra meaning. Now, he, he would have been just as happy either or, but the fact that he hit the home run to bring the runs in to, uh, to, to set them up to win the game, put them ahead, you know, it was, you know, it was perfect. So He wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have done that little dance if he just won the game for them. He wouldn't have done that, not the dance, but the, the, right, right. the emotion that we saw. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's how you know that that was a huge deal because he never really showed emotion. And for no. him to do that, you know, under those circumstances, I think uh, that proves right there how important that was uh, to him. You know, um, he, he knew the gravity of the situation. Now, Gary, you had mentioned 1980 and how the Phillies uh, had that three year period where they won the NL East, went to the playoffs. And uh, they actually they get and get to the big game. 1979 rolls around. They go and they sign Pete Rose to try to push him into the playoffs. 1979 was a huge bust for the Phils, except for Schmidt, who had a hell of a season. Right. In 1980, and we come to what I have listed as home run number two on the list, October 3rd, 1980. Now, this one, we have the Phillies and the Expos tied for first place going into the last series in Montreal. Whoever wins that series of three games, whoever wins two of those games, wins the East. And just a week before, the Phils had dropped two out of three to Montreal. Right, So the stakes could not be higher. First inning, Rose gets on base with a single. Schmidt comes up. He gets on base with a signal. 
single, he gets moved to third, and McBride hits him over with a double. Schmidt comes up, sacrifice fly, scores the run. We then come to, I believe it was the fifth inning. Top, six, top of the sixth inning, excuse me. One out, no one on base. Schmidt hits a solo home run off Scott Sanderson. Give the Phils a two to nothing lead. Now that was, that game was an incredible pitcher's duel. Sanderson versus Ruthen. Ruthen gives up a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the sixth. That's the only run the Expos score. The Phils win the game two to one. And because Schmidt, was the entire offense that day. Schmidt was responsible for giving the Phils that advantage going into the October 4th game. Dude, I agree with you. I mean, I, again, the, the first time I heard your list, I was like, eh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right on the money that uh, without without his performance that day, you know, they don't have the advantage going into the last game. I, obviously, they're, they're done, right? They, no, no, they had three games left. Gary, what do you what do you think of that? The uh, the home run on October third is, and the way it was, that was the first of the three game series. So they had three games. He wins the first, puts takes a lot of pressure off because now they only have to win one of two, right? Going into the last two games, and of yeah. course, I would they, we're going to talk about the next game. I mean, I, I definitely see the five hundredth one being higher than this one for sure. Uh, I, I can I can see the second one being the the next day's home run, um, but you know in the grand scheme of things, yeah, this did make it a little easier the next day. It made them only one, but I mean it, it wasn't like it was a um, if he didn't hit hit that home run, it wouldn't have wouldn't have changed the season. I don't think you know would have would have had another game or two they would have had to play, and they were able to let you know let their pitchers rest a day or two. Because of that, you know, they had a couple extra games still that, you know, two would games be- left. they had to play the game, the next game, uh, play their hearts out. And then in the third game, they brought um, Tim McCarver back. Yep. Right. So the Tim McCarver could claim that he played in four decades. Four decades. But I mean, right, so, so- right. So, I mean, but what I'm saying is that this one did make it so that their game wasn't right necessary, I- but, you know, so. As, as it is important, I just don't see it really this high on the list, and maybe not even on the list. The next one, number one on my list, was the next day, October 4th, 1980, right? And we have a real back-and-forth battle. Phils take a 3-2 to two lead going into the top of the seventh, but the Phils' defense was just off that day, right? They had five errors. They had... You know, and in the top of the seventh, it's uh, was, yeah, in the seventh inning itself, uh, the the Phils had um, it was the bottom of the seventh because it was in Montreal. But we had a uh, an uncharacteristic error by Manny Trio. We had a throwing error by Bob Boone. That leads to a run, and uh, uh, you know, Boone eventually does redeem himself. We get to the ninth inning. That gives up. That gave up the lead. Boone redeems himself in the ninth inning, ties up the score, sends the game into extras. Tenth inning, nothing. Nobody scores. We're still tension. This, which, I mean, this whole season, 1980, was, uh, you think about it, how incredibly close this was. Get to the 11th inning. Rose leads off with a single. McBride pops out, and now Schmidt's up to the plate with one out. And with this... I'm going to let Andy Musser tell us what happened. The pitch to Schmidt. Long drive to left field. He buried it. He buried it way back. Out of here. Home run. Mike Schmidt puts the Phillies up 6-4. to four. So, what do you think about this one? Paul, what do you think about me listing this as number one? Yeah, I, uh, I, I again, I would have gone. All right, Gary. I would have gone probably uh, the, the you know last time we talked the 500th would be number one, but I, I think you're right, man. This this is the most important home run probably in in, in Philly's history, uh, you know, to get them to the point where they can go to the go to the playoffs and uh, ultimately win their first World Series title. So I think I think you're right on the money. Um, I'd like to disagree with you, but I can't on this on this one. I, I will say actually, at the rewatching the video today on this, I I see this one, yeah, right up there. 
You know, I mean, it's really tight. I still like 500 better, but as far as importance for the Phillies, yeah, this was this was Schmidt coming through for the organization, taking them to the next level. So you may have changed my mind. And I yeah, I, I note here you wrote a note that says Harry Callis did the TV call. You watched it today. How was yeah. the Harry Callis's TV call? Oh, it was good. I mean, it was, I, I don't remember exactly, but I mean, it was, it was really good. Um, again, class carry cows, of course, right? Long drive. Watch that, baby. Way, way out of here. Home run. Mike Smith. Phillies lead six to four. We, all right. So thank you guys so much for talking to me today. Uh, you guys at home, let me know what you think. Go down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you think uh, I had it wrong on any any of the home runs on this list. Would you have listed a different home run? Would you have uh, ordered them differently? Like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any ideas for topics that we can cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more of these videos, please consider becoming a patron through Patreon. Again, we'll have a link in the description box below.